So let's start off with the idea of um, charge on a capacitor. So if we have a capacitor and we apply a voltage to that capacitor, there's going to be a certain amount of charge that's stored on that capacitor. And it's just the voltage times the capacitance. Okay. And so if this is the case, we can use the conservation of energy to figure out um, those equations that I just wrote. So let's start off with these two, th this configuration. And let's just say that we have C1 and C2 here. Okay. And let's say that we want to find out, we want to find out uh, using the conservation of energy, we should have already talked about that, energy coming from a battery or being produced by a battery, and the energy that's being consumed or the voltage that's being consumed by C1 and C2. Alright, so let's do that. Let's assume that current is going around like so. So we end up with um, the energy from the battery, that's what's being produced, is going to be equal to the energy being consumed by capacitor number one, plus the energy that's being consumed by capacitor number two. Now, from based on it, whether I've discussed this or not, I want to just reiterate, but power is going to be equal to I times delta V. Okay? So we're going to use this idea in this analysis. Remember that the change in work, which is the work energy theorem, is just equal to the change in energy. So if we say the change in energy of delta V is equal to the change in energy of E sub 1 plus the change in energy of E sub 2, we know that all of these are just the, it's just the work change in work from the battery or that the battery is doing on the circuit. And then we have work being done on capacitor number one plus the work being done on capacitor number two. If we divide these by time, we're going to end up with power because work over power, or work over time is equal to power. So I'm just going to put P delta V equals to P, the power being used by capacitor 1 plus the power being used by capacitor 2. So now that we have our power equation, we're just going to substitute power back into this equation. So we're going to have I is equal to delta V. It's equal to I1 times V1 plus I2 times V2. Now, this is the current times the voltage, and it equals to the current times the voltage uh, for the capacitor and for capacitor 1 and capacitor 2. In a series circuit, it may you may or may not remember, or it may or may not been, have been mentioned, that the current going through the circuit is going to be the same all the way through. So when I say I1, that's the current going to capacitor 1, and when I say I2, that's the current going to capacitor 2. If this is the case, we know that our voltage is going to look like this for capacitors. So now that we have that, we're going to just use this formula inside of this particular, um, this particular equation. And this formula can be rewritten and it can look like voltage is equal to Q over C. So notice we have our voltages down here. We're just going to have Q over C. Um, yeah. So I'll just say done and produce another picture here. So we have delta V equals to V1 plus V2. And we know that our voltage is equal to Q over C. So delta V is going to be the total charge over the 
total capacitance. V1 is going to be the charge on capacitor 1 divided by capacitor 1, and then V2 is going to be the charge on capacitor 2 divided by capacitor 2. So all three of these equations, we put them into our aforementioned equation right here, voltage drops, will have QT over CT equals to Q1 over C1 plus Q2 over C2. Okay? Hopefully that's making sense to you guys mathematically. All I did was substitute those in. Now, if we divide equa this equation by T, we'll end up with our representation for current. So we'll end up with current because Q over T is just current. That's the way we're looking at it. And we know that current for a series circuit is just equal. So this equation implies that C, the total C, total capacitance is just equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. So our, that's our, our mathematical symbolic representation. I say mathematical symbolic, but we, we start with symbolic and then we go to mathematical. And so I wanted to show you guys where this came from for this particular uh, circuit here. So I'll do the same thing for this one. And I'll do it right now. So in this particular case, we're going to have two capacitors. They're going to look like this. So we're going to put a voltage on them. C1, C2, I1, I2, V1, V2. And we're going to have a current coming around like so. So we're going to use our same energy equation, conservation of energy. Um, and that's the energy being produced by the battery is equal to the energy being consumed by capacitor 1 plus the energy being co consumed by capacitor number 2. We are going to take the change in that. Since we have a change, we can rewrite this as work. And we're just saying that this is the work being uh, being done on the circuit by the battery, and uh, we have our works uh, work being uh, uh, being done on the capacitors, or the capacitors are doing work. And so we can divide these by time, and we end up with power. So we know that this is just equal to I times delta V, which equals to I1 times V1 plus I2 times V2. All right. Now, in this particular case, what I want you guys to know is the voltages are going to be the same. So the voltages in this kind of circuit are the same all the way through. If that is the case, we end up with a, a very important law, and it's called the conservation of charge. So we have the conservation of energy, the conservation of momentum, the conservation of mass, the conservation of charge, and there are a lot of conservation laws here. So we have this conservation uh, uh, law here, which is very powerful, and we're going to use the idea that Q is just equal to V times C in just one moment. So for charge, or for current, we end up with total over T. You know what? Let me rewrite this. We start off with current. Total current equals to, and I'm writing that T there. I didn't have it on the other page. 
But that's essentially what I'm saying. This is the total, this is the total, and this is the total. All right? So let me make sure I say that. And then we have I1 plus I2. So the total charge here over time is equal to the current. So this is the motion of the charges. We have Q1 over T plus Q2 over T. And all of these T's can go away, so we just end up with QT equals to Q1 plus Q2. All right? And so now all we have to do is substitute um, this equation into that. All right? And that's our charge is equal to voltage times capacitance. And we end up with delta V times the total, total capacitance equals to V1 times C1 plus V2 times C2. Now we know that the voltages are equal to one another. Thus, we, well, I should say therefore, therefore we can write CT equals to C1 plus C2. Again, from our symbolic representation, we have our math here. And that's where we get that from, okay? That's going to be it for this particular piece. We should move quickly into the experiment after this.